we're good. We're running. Running. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so I forgot already how to do this part of the meeting <laughs> since oh. last time. <laughs> so you just want everyone, give everybody a few minutes to read through and okay. if they have any um, changes, people can make suggested edits and then someone should um, move, make a move motion to accept the minutes as amended. So will you be uh, writing the changes into the minutes? Yes, so I'll take notes on the changes. On um, number 3.2, I just wanted to um, make sure that the um, municipal buildings is, is added in there. Just always need to remind people that the zero energy bylaw only refers to municipal buildings. Having new town buildings doesn't remind them enough. So um, the goal is, maybe the line, the goal is to build the most efficient municipal buildings. Got it. Yeah, I think on page that run where it says we haven't built any yet under Laura, Laura, mm -hmm. we haven't built any yet. So I think that was in reference to schools, but I, I, I don't see where we talk about it in the meetings beyond that. So, but maybe we can just say we haven't built any new schools yet. I guess actually that was all buildings, right? Built many new buildings, mm -hmm. but with reference to the Fort River building, kind of, yeah. Any new buildings? New municipal buildings? Any new, yeah, maybe that's best. Thank you, Stephanie. Sure. Since the bylaw has been passed. Any other comments? I have no comments and move that we approve the minutes. Second. Move to approve the, amend the minutes as amended. Yeah. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> and then we vote. And then you vote. All in favor, is that fine, or do we need to do a roll call? No, you can just all, all in favor. favor. Okay, okay, great. I got y'all unanimous, that's easy. Yeah, and thank you, Darcy, for taking the notes, the minutes. Yes, very good job. Um, so I also wanna see if there's somebody who wants to take minutes for this meeting. Can I get a volunteer? Anybody? I'll take minutes today. Okay, perfect, thank you. So then I think we can move on to item two, which is public comment. Would you like to say anything? Press, press, press the mic. Okay, my name is Noni Bjork and I'm here as a member of the Public Shade Tree Committee. And we feel that we ought to be very much involved with what you're doing. For myself, I want to say that taking down trees to put up solar panels is a really bad idea. And the trees, I'm sure I don't have to tell any of you, are critical to the health of the world. Um, 
I'm going to paraphrase this very badly, but I read a short review of a book by I, Margaret Robinson. Does anybody know? She was the prime minister. as just something else, until she heard, held her firstborn grandchild in her arms. And now she heads a commission, a European climate concern commission. And I think that, that for me really says it all. Um, putting up solar panels on your house is sort of self-serving, especially if you take down trees for it. It should be a cooperative thing. And heaven knows that there are millions of miles of treeless, paved parking lots and shopping malls. And that's where the effort for solar installation could be. And we... I said we would really, really, really like to be involved, and um, I think we'd like to be kept up to know what your agenda is, and we're always ready to jump in. Noni, um, can you spell your last name? B-U-R-A-C-K. Does anyone here have a hard copy of an agenda that we could give Noni? Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't print them out, um, but I can get one to her. Noni, I can either email it to you, or I can email it to you, or I can I print it and mail it. I don't have email. Okay, so I can mail it to you. I'll mail you. Mail it to me? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, sure. I'll, um, if you could leave me your address on your way out, yes. that would be great. It only goes on when there's people in the room and it takes a while for it to cool off. You're welcome and I'll, I'll mail them to you. Maybe we can make a point of having a few hard copies just in case we get members of the public. Yeah, I always do. I just yeah. didn't. I, I was so worried about this technology tonight that I totally forgot about having printed copies. So sorry. I'll, they, they will be in the future. Yeah. Thank you for your comment. Okay, so I think now we can move on to item three, which is reviewing the options for the 90-day submission to the council. Um, we've allocated quite a bit of time to this. Um, so I think we can have an opportunity for everyone that submitted to maybe talk through quickly their um, proposal, and then we can have some discussion. Does that sound okay? Just give Stephanie a second to. I'm just going to make it bigger. Nani, can you read that? Sorry, let me just. Do you all? You all need it larger. Um, Do you want to time people? So um, yeah, I've got my thing going right here, so I'm good. Um, yeah, I think we can give everybody maybe five minutes. Does that sound okay? We might not need that long, but. Um, Do we want sorry. to discuss after each one? Use, use your mic. Do we want to discuss each one after that? one because we might have questions or wait till the end maybe I should suggest that we could suggest that we do clarifying questions after each one and then do a group discussion at the end does that sound okay seeing sure. nods okay great 
So it looks like this is in alphabetical order, which means that I am going first, I believe. Um, so I will start my, my lap here. Um, <laughs> so my notes here are kind of a, a bit of a ramble, so I apologize for that. Um, but I included a little bit of background to set the stage for why I feel like we could be bold and, um, and think a little bit bigger, mainly because so much has happened just in the past six months um, in terms of reports about the impacts of climate change, in terms of public outcry about climate change, and most recently, the Green New Deal um, that was that resolution that was put out. And I've highlighted here that I just took directly from the Green New Deal right up these five goals that the Green New Deal um, aims to, to accomplish. And I'll read these quickly. Achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions through a fair and just transition for all communities and workers. Create millions of good high wage jo jobs and ensure prosperity and economic security for all people of the United States. Invest in the infrastructure and industry of the United States to sustainably meet the challenges of the 21st century. Secure clean air and water, climate and community resiliency, health, healthy food, access to nature, and a sustainable environment for all. And promote justice and equality by stopping current preventable future preventing future and repairing the historic oppression of frontline and vulnerable communities, communities excuse me. Um, so this has really gotten me thinking bigger and bolder myself about climate change and climate action. Um, as I mentioned in our last meeting, we saw Ithaca, um, and thank you Darcy for sending that around, propose a Green New Deal path, pathway for their town um, the UK just last week declared a goal of carbon neutrality by 2040, 2050, and many of our US Democratic candidates for president are taking versions of the Green New Deal and setting goals anywhere between 2030 and 2050. Um, so I sort of feel like the, particularly the backstop goal is, is out there, which is n net zero or carbon neutrality by 2050, depending on how we define that. Um, so, I, I, but I think there's m many interim goals and needs that need to be addressed. Um, and I really think we could do better, better than that. I think the other language in the Green New Deal is that 40 to 60% reduction by 2030 and then net zero by 2050. But I don't think that we can do this on our own. I think there is um, a really important role for collective action. Um, and this is gonna be a major change in, our, in the way we operate, both as a town, but also in our state and in our society. So I, I think in terms of getting back to the council, I guess my th initial thought, and it's changed a little bit, honestly, since reading other people's things, so I'd like, I'm excited to discuss it. But I do think that um, we can go back to the council now, or within the 90 days, with the initial recommended target of being Green New Deal ready by 2030 with a backstop goal of net zero by 2050. And then give us some time, I said a year, may not need to be that long, to do significant work, work both within our committee, with other town experts, and with our community members to develop a roadmap of specific actions. Many of which I think others have already put out there. Um, I don't think we need to ask for an extension, honestly, because I think this approach exceeds the order and the charge of the committee. Um, I think we will meet the goals of the resolution in support of 100% renewable energy, and very likely a more specific goal and timeline will come out of the process. Why do I say not just set a carbon neutrality goal? I think that's because the system changes go way beyond our control, and um, we wanna also recognize that there may be policy shifts and other things that we need to be advocating for or helping to push um, that go beyond just setting a target around, um, for example, 100% renewable. Um, I listed here some of the things we need to think about, obviously transportation, thermal energy, power, um, and I think there's so much amazing things happening in our community um, we need to understand what factors support our community in meeting a goal, goals for a, be a thriving 
net zero community and what would hinder them and how do we build solutions. So that's my five minutes. I do have a clarifying question, and uh, just about what, what, how you were envisioning the concept of Green New Deal ready. I, I didn't totally get that. Yeah, so I think that that would be, um, so I think there's several, and we can look back to our, um, both to our own omissions report as well as um, you know, Jesse included some, some information from Drawdown. Um, those sort of highlight all of the ways that we would, all of the sectors that we can influence in our town, but then also all of the ways that we can address climate change. And so I think what I say by saying Green New Deal ready is identifying what are the sectors we need to focus on and then what reductions can we make versus what can we do to have those sectors be ready to be net zero or 40 to 60 percent net zero by 2030. Why, why I'm saying Green New Deal, ready, New Deal ready is Green New Deal is just a resolution, so um, it's also in flux. So I don't, um, I didn't feel like we could be more specific right now. Um, and I also feel like there may be limitations for us as a town on our own to achieve some of these goals, but that doesn't mean they're not worthwhile to strive for. Um, but I wanted to keep that collective avenue, which is why I said Green New Deal ready. Okay, Darcy, do you want uh, to? So mine is the next plan on the list here, and I have a, a couple things I just wanted to make sure people got before I started. One is um, that I actually made an amendment to my first page, which I'm going to hand out. Um, the, um, so I, so there's that, and I also wanted to, I attempted to send a link to the Amherst Bulletin article where the, the high schoolers, um, who were, uh, endorsed by the Environmental Action Club and the, and the Amherst Sunrise Movement suggested a, um, you know, a Green New Deal-ish, a goal for the town of Amherst of, um, becoming carbon neutral by 2030. Um, that was, I, I don't think, a surprise to anyone that they would be putting forward a bold goal like that. Um, and I also want to point out uh, a, a link that I sent this committee just uh, before this meeting that I just got this afternoon um, news that there's going to be a resolution before the Northampton City Council coming up um, very soon where they're going to be proposing that Northampton be um, uh, uh, supporting the National Green New Deal, um, and, and they're considering how they might um, resolve that the, the town itself have its own Green New Deal, but that's in flux right now. So I think it would be make sense for us to stay in communication with them about what they're thinking. They've been looking at the Boston uh, resolution. And so just so that we uh, are up to date with what all the other communities are doing. Um, so anyway, uh, I, in my plan that I put forward, um, uh, basically put forward some overall greenhouse gas reduction goals. And I amended it a little bit, again, like Laura did after looking at other people's plans. Um, and um, also, uh, I thought a lot about the concept of what the town has control over, um, because there are certain things that we would really like to have happen, but we're totally dependent on, or 
it seems that we're dependent on whether or not we get state and federal help uh, to do those things like um, retrofitting the residential and commercial sectors of existing housing or existing buildings. That's, you know, the trickiest part of all of this. So um, I tried to focus on the first two, the first two um, points on um, actions that we, I think we have under our own control as a town. Um, and one of which is electricity. I think that is uh, not only feasible, but um, very probable that we could get close to 100% locally sourced owned con and controlled or purchased renewable electricity by 2030 uh, through community choice aggregation. That wouldn't cover everything because uh, people have the opportunity to opt out. If we, if we did adopt a program, you know, there would be a certain segment of the population who would opt out and there'd be certain uh, um, entities uh, who might not be a part of it because they are commercial and they already have their own um, providers. Um, hopefully by 2030, we'd be able to convince them to come with the CCA if we end up adopting that. But that's something that we could conceivably have control over that would be very bold um, and that would be very positive in that it would actually be revenue generating. So that's one thing. Um, other, another thing that we have control over is municipal operations. So we could conceivably say something about when we want to have our municipal operations carbon neutral. Um, and so on my list, I am hoping that it could be carbon neutral by 2030. Then I have a blank on number three for carbon neutrality in the residential and commercial sectors for the reason that I just said, because um, unless we pass a bylaw requiring everyone to retrofit their houses and businesses, we do have to depend on um, whether or not incentives come online. I would like to have language like that in number four to um, ensure that the benefits to the transition to carbon neutrality be shared equitably among residents, regardless of race, income, or status as renters, and that the costs of the transition do not disproportionately affect low-income residents. I think that's really important to get in there because of the fact that 40% of our population are renters. Um, uh, at least someone gave me that figure today, and I think I believe that. Is it 51? Oh, hmm. okay. Um, I think that we could put in our goals um, a date for completing our plan uh, or roadmap to carbon neutrality, um, which is in our charge. It's not in our order, but we could put that in so that we um, we could be more specific about all the different things that we would like to do with, you know, medium-term target dates for the transportation sector, the building sector, the electricity sector, et cetera. Um, and lastly, I would really like to have a goal of an education campaign. And this is, doesn't, isn't the outreach campaign that we'll need to do while we're doing the plan, but an education plan during the decade to come where we are on an ongoing basis um, getting town residents and businesses not just on board, but being our cheerleaders uh, so that they are really um, you know, the whole town is together in this effort. Um, I was very impressed with what Newton is doing with Community Choice Energy. They, they have lawn signs that if people get community, if they opt Sorry, up Darcy, to, you're, you're a, little, a little over time, yeah. <laughs> 
the details of what I would like to have done in the sectors in the other in the second page. So please take a look at that. But they, they would not probably be in the main goals. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Darcy? Just clarifying, is this is, and maybe I missed it, this is assuming we do deliver the 90-day. Yes, I, yeah, I would, um, uh, I am not, I'm assuming that we're not going to ask for an extension longer than September so that we can talk to students when they come back. And Darcy, can you explain what you mean by the difference between outreach versus educational campaign? Um, I, I know that we are uh, required to do outreach um, during the process of goal setting. Um, and so that's one thing is outreach to try to get buy-in from the community around our goals and our plan. But once we have a plan in a year or so, I don't think that's the end of our, of our outreach and education. I think that we need to, to have a pretty large education campaign in the schools and generally kind of a PR-ish type campaign where um, we are, you know, having contests between neighborhoods who can do more. Uh, there are all sorts of possibilities for education. Great, thanks. Um, Andra, I think you're up when you're, when you're ready. So, um, <clears throat> I treated the exercise of um, developing guidelines for our 90-day goals as um, examples of how we could actually write what we are going to write to the um, council. So, um, but it, in doing so, I implied my suggestions that um, we have a one month extension of the 90 day um, so that we could have at least one public forum where we could present our plan for the rest of the time um, to come to a community-based um, plan for how we will get to um, the goals. And, um, the, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, we gave students an opportunity. You can't do that in, in August. Um, so it does involve asking for a short um, extension of the deadline. I wouldn't want to go any farther than a month. Um, and then um, I would want to have some specific goals um, that are just easily spelled out um, and perhaps we could define Green New Deal ready um, in terms of these you know specific goals um, just as a way of communicating it um, if we find that is a good way to communicate um, or just you know a simple carbon neutral by 2030 in and I divided it rather than by um, sectors like transportation, electricity, um, suggested that we could also think in terms of segments of the community, like starting with municipal because that is where we have some control. Um, of course, we could break it down so that it's both sectors within the segments as well. Um, and I think that would make sense and make it seem more feasible as well. So um, I just gave an example and made off up out of whole cloth um, just to get us thinking in a concrete way of how we might um, require you know, municipal buildings to um, be retrofitted. We already have new buildings covered 
So the next step would be retrofitting municipal buildings. Um, and you don't start with 100%. You, you, you go with, you know, gradually uh, working your way up. So 20% by 2020 sounded good. 70% um, by 2025 municipal buildings being retrofitted. And we'd have to develop a standard of um, energy efficiency. Um, and I would leave that up to Jesse. Um, and then the <laughs> uh, residential and commercial segments would be, you know, like some years behind in um, reaching various goals. Um, so that's just an example of um, one sector and how we could think about it. Um, and then um, we would want not just to put out the target, but also the uh, <laughs> um, the how we're going to plan the plan, um, and that you know would involve m mentioning how many forums and um, the segments of the population that we'll be sure to reach. Um, uh, but uh, but I also see a really important uh, combination of our goals with what's already being planned, you know, and, and we would need to really kind of lay side by side the uh, calendar for, you know, where the community choice aggregation planning is at and where the um, municipal vulnerability planning um, is that and, and when green communities um, dates for submitting applications are and you know to kind of that be a part of our planning roadmap just to plan our roadmap um, did you want to sorry no I'm just I'm apologizing that the screen is having some technical issues and I don't know why it's not anything I'm doing and it's just that screen that monitor so and I don't know how to specifically turn that one off and not the whole system so I apologize okay well that's what I'm saying is I well Nani doesn't yeah but she can't yeah if you could I mean I don't know that it helps you if I mean if you wanted to turn around and look at that screen I, um, the problem is I can't, I'd have to shut down the whole system. You want me to shut down the whole system? You mean the recording? No, I, I yeah. don't want to mess with. Yeah, just turn off the projector. That's what I'm saying is I don't know that I can. That's what I'm. I think the most important thing is that we continue the recording. I don't. Well, that's why I don't want to mess. I'm with not that. using the projection at all. Okay. I don't want to mess with that. Is that really so annoying that you can't deal with it? <laughs> Stephanie, can if I press image mute here, would that do it? Um, you can try. There you go. I, as long as okay. I can see, it just Nani doesn't have anything, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. And yes, and you, can you verify we're still recording? Um, you're still recording. I don't know if it's getting any. Uh, the camera's on, but it just won't be getting anything that um, we're looking at. That's all. Okay. So this is in the packet. Um, okay. okay. So <laughs> subtract yeah. a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I will want to think about criteria that I think would guide the um, community and stakeholder conversations um, in terms of how we want to reach the goals um, and, and get feedback on those criteria, but, but put them out, I think. Um, and we could include things like significant and swift reductions in greenhouse gas emissions um, in all sectors and 
um, leading with municipal decisions and buildings, fleets, um, following with the residential, commercial, um, helping Amherst achieve our economic goals while reaching climate goals and having that be a theme, um, and achieving our environmental and social justice goals while reaching our climate goals. Just, just so that you know, we're putting right out there that um, this is not in conflict with any of our other community goals. Um, and that combining efforts with neighboring communities could be one of our criteria uh, for actions. And then addressing mitigation in our adaptation initiatives, especially in the initial ones, so that we're getting kind of a jump start on um, the mitigation as we're doing adaptation. Great, any clarifying questions? Okay, turn over to Evan. So I've been thinking quite a bit about this for the past seven months. Um, and so uh, a little bit of history just so people understand where my um, perspective is coming from. So a very, very early draft of the order um, that was never public, I don't think, actually included goals in it, right? It actually had target dates in it um, that were agreed upon between Darcy and myself. And there was a feeling that uh, these were community goals, these were town-wide goals, and perhaps it wasn't appropriate for two counselors on their own sitting in a room to determine what the goals are for the community. And so we that's where this order came from. And there was this idea that no, the goals shouldn't come from the counselors who create the committee, they should come from the committee itself. Um, now as I sit here as a member of the committee, my thought is as town-wide community goals, they shouldn't come from nine people on the committee, they should come from the community. Um, because one of the things I wanna think about is whatever goals we come up with, whatever target dates, uh, they need to be embraced by both the community and the council, right? And so questions we can expect immediately from the council, because we do have to get this through the council, right? Um, hopefully, I think our hope would be without amendment, uh, would be councilors are gonna ask, are these goals reasonable? Are they achievable? And, and would people support these? And the public has to also feel like they're reasonable, they're achievable, and Amherst is not just setting some, you know, we wanna be bold, but we also don't want people to discredit the goals. And so the more I've thought about this, the more I've thought that these goals and targets should not just reflect conversations that occur in town hall, but should reflect conversations that are occurring in our community. And the more I've thought about what that looks like, the more I've come around to the idea of asking for an extension. And I'll be the minority voice here saying, when I say an extension, I'm not talking about a one month extension, I'm talking about maybe a six month extension. And my thought process is this. We have about five meetings in the summer. And we could use those five meetings to come up with a really robust process to come up with these goals that engages as much of the public and as much of the stakeholders as possible. And I think that public forums are great, but the people who show up to public forums don't tend to be representative of the community. I mean, you can see that in data. You can also just see that in the public forums that the town council has held. I mean, we held one on a budget with five people there, right? Um, it's hard to get people to show up, and the people who show up are the ones who are like gangbusters about this. And we want those people there, but we also want other people there too. Um, and that's why I was really impressed with the meeting that Stephanie organized as part of the MVP, because I, I, I'm so used to walking into meetings as a counselor and being able to tell you before I walk in the door who's gonna be there. And that was one of the first meetings I went to where I walked in the room and I went, I don't know anyone, except for Andra, who was there. And I said, this is great, right? These are, these are new voices. But that takes time to organize. Um, I think that we need a series of meetings, not just one public forum. I think we need to go to people. I was really impressed with um, Darcy and Shalini holding one of their district meetings at Butternut Farm, right? Um, I, I've been really impressed with a lot of the outreach the council has been doing, and that's what I'm envisioning, is actually going into the community, meeting the community where they are, 
and having this conversation. I think also we need to think about who are the stakeholders in this and having meetings with them. Uh, one is certainly the town. I mean, all of these municipal goals cost money. Darcy and I just went through the budget process. The town isn't flush, flush with cash. Um, we're talking about energy efficiency retrofits. I'm looking at the 20-year capital, uh, the 10-year capital plan, and what's already sort of budgeted for that. Um, and some of these goals would would involve dramatic increases. So we can't set these without having real conversations with the town, so that we're not, so that when we come to the council, they say, "Can we afford this?" We don't want them to turn their town manager, and the town manager says, "No." Right. Um, I'm thinking of the business community. I, I sat down when we were coming up with the charge for this committee um, with the executive director of the business improvement district who, who had a lot of concerns. How, how might this affect local businesses? Um, because when we're talking about the business community, we're not talking about big Y, we're talking about a lot of these small businesses um, for whom an increase in, in energy costs could, could be problematic. Uh, I'm thinking of young people. Um, both at the colleges, but also at our schools. I mean, I think that it's really impressive what some of the high school students have been doing. I'd love to have a public forum that was just in the high school or just in the elementary schools and say, what do you think about this? But just planning all of those takes time. Implementing them takes a lot longer. And so my preference um, would actually be to ask for a much longer timeline to use the 90 days we had originally allocated to set goals to coming up with a process of engaging as many people as possible, and then utilizing the fall to sort of run that process and see what does the community want and also what's feasible, right? I mean, I don't want to throw goals out and then have local businesses say that will, that, that, that's unacceptable. I want to go and talk to them first, right? Um, I put in here that I like the idea, and, and to some extent I like a lot of what Laura said about this Green New Deal readiness, rethinking what we mean by goals. I like the idea of sort of having visions, to, uh, having visions, that sounds weird, um, starting with, with a vision, right? So coming to people and saying, so what do you want transportation in Amherst to look like in a low or no carbon future? What does that look like to you? And some people might say, everyone's driving electric cars, and some people might say, very few people are driving cars and we have really robust public transit. And other people might say, we want bike lanes, right? Um, and other people might say, I don't know, no one leaves their house so there's no emissions, but, right? But getting, getting the idea of what this looks like and then working backwards from that and saying, okay, if the, if the community really thinks the future is in electric cars, how do we get that infrastructure up? Or if they think it's in public transit, what do we need to set as goals to get there? And, and sort of starting with that vision and working backwards, I guess, is, is a really interesting approach to me, which represents a big change from where I was maybe seven months ago. Great, thanks, Evan. Any clarifying questions? Okay, Jesse. So I think I'm going to start with a, a couple quick non sequiturs. One is uh, just to report uh, from my um, demographic of architects, the AI has just declared a climate emergency. Um, I think, and that ties into, I think, a, a level of excitement about tackling this head on. I, I spent mo the end of last week at a uh, carbon and climate summit with a hundred architects trying to figure out what to do about this. And I think similar to this group and to this town and to the rest of the world right now, there is a lot of boldness and creativity and a profound not knowing exactly what to do. And, re and this, this realization that we don't actually know what to do and, and, and what we're what we've put on the table is um, a profound cultural shift, m more so than a technological problem, and I just want to put that out there. Um, as such, I, I, uh, I really appreciate the, the considerations of the timeline of how we do our work. I also want to note I have a concern that the result of our work will be more plans, more bold statements, uh, better versions of the charge, better, you know, and I deeply respect and, and 
appreciate the thoughtful behavior that we're laying out for ourselves, but I wonder if we can continue to try to put some action on the table. And if that includes failure, that's okay. We get feedback from that failure, but I think to show the world that we're doing something, something real, and it doesn't have to be the biggest or the best thing, but I think some direct action that has measurable results has to be part of our short-term goals. I wanna, so balancing, I think that is the real tension of balancing the sense of urgency and the value of planning. Um, and I wonder if that is a parallel process where we, for example, we start to take, take small action, experimental action, trend-setting action, bold action, action that will inspire others. At the same time, we're getting community input. I wonder if that's possible. I'd like to think it is, um, so that we don't create a, just a recurring pattern of planning. Not to plan, again, it's important. And then the only other point I want to make is to propose that, and this wasn't on what I wrote, uh, to potentially propose a revision to the net zero energy law or bylaw um, and revise some of the language to include uh, the true effect uh, to the atmosphere as far as carbon emissions and, and not just net zero energy. It is possible to make a net zero energy building that has an initial impact that is, takes 50 or 100 years to recoup due to the embodied carbon of that project. Um, I think there's other aspects of this. We saw the carbon drawdown reference. I think we just have to make sure we're being honest and truth telling about the effect of our actions. And so net zero energy specifically, I, I'm concerned it doesn't capture it can be the right thing to do, but it can also be a, a, a disaster as far as what happens in the next five years. Um, so I believe that is something I want to get in front of the town council as soon as possible before buildings start getting built to make sure we're looking at um, the true uh, global warming potential and a time-weighted impact of our choices as a town and that we can then transmit that to the rest of the world and say what we did. I went off script there. That's okay. <laughs> you were the only one that went under five minutes. Um, <laughs> okay, this has been Can I ask you a clarifying question? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, so Jesse, I wanna understand what you mean by um, the um, true global warming um, effects of the new buildings. In, um, do you, you're, you're talking about um, materials, looking at the sources of, of the actual building process um, and, and calculating that into the greenhouse gas reduction goals. Yes, in particular, the use of very carbon intensive and high global warming potential materials such as two-part spray foams that make it very easy to reduce your operational energy but are in the near term putting um, very potent global warming molecules into the atmosphere, far more potent than CO2. I think buildings have the opportunity to sequester carbon or, and also I think it's important to note, there is um, very measurable and hard to come back from impacts of the, the way built, the actual construction process. For example, if municipal buildings were only built in the summer, they would use far less energy as far as temporary heat um, and, and things like that. It's measurable, it's, it's, it's important. Other uh, truthfulness I would propose is being fully aware of the site to source energy factors. When we talk about natural gas, we realize that it's not, it's not the emissions, it's the leaked gas. It's two or three times worse than what we think. I think this is an education piece. Um, maybe we can put this in front of the council and, 
and make guidelines pretty quickly and easily. They're already out there. Um, yeah, and in particular, the time-weighted impact of these projects. Is it, is it a project that will take my lifetime to, in, in its energy savings to recoup its impact, or can it be net positive from, from, from the get-go or close to it? Can you provide us with some materials about what you're talking about? I can, although I will say this. This is, this is a little new. I mean, it's not new, scientifically speaking, but as far as our industry is, we're, we are scrambling right now to get this data, to understand what are the best practices, and it's not always intuitive. I mean, one simple way, just it'd be a simple linguist, uh, semantic change in the bylaw to move from energy to carbon equivalent emissions. So I <clears throat> have jotted that down um, as probably another agenda item at, at some point, it sounds like. I table it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, great, thank you. So I um, wanted to, to make a comment, but I wanted to open up the floor first for others. Um, Um, I just wanted to clarify what I meant by Green New Deal Ready because I think I um, didn't answer that completely well. Um, but in my experience with target setting and get, bringing stakeholders together and, and trying to agree to targets, really the most important thing is building ownership and excitement and the desire to want to meet the goals. My, my concern with going out with just some targets is that even ones that we spend the next 90 days developing will be met with skepticism by someone or lots of people. Um, so I think what I was thinking about when I talk about Green New Deal Ready is that we do some very sector specific forums and, I, and um, and these are sec. I think they're they're going to be a cross section of sectors. They're going to be a cross section of communities. It's going to be out in the community. It's not going to be, um, you know, in in town hall. But I think um, an example could be we have a meeting, and this is actually something we could potentially do this summer as a test run, because the local businesses are here and they're less busy when students aren't here. Um, so could we have a sector specific forum with them as a test run and say, what does carbon neutral mean in the commercial building sector? What does that future look like? What can we do as a town versus what do we need the utilities, other policies, states, nations to do? What goal can we feel good about that's bold and actionable but also achievable? And how do we move forward with that goal? And so the idea being is that in that forum, we sort of vision this Green New Deal future, and then we back, go back from that to set some, some goals. And then when we present that to the committee um, at some point, maybe six, six months later, as Evan suggested, we know that we have the backing of that, of that group. Um, and we could do this with a whole host of, of different sectors, as well as different community groups and affinity groups. Um, so that's my, what I guess a better, what I think is probably a better explanation of what I mean when I say Green New Deal Ready. My other 
question that it's, I'm really confused about the charge versus the order. <laughs> and can someone explain to me what we actually have been charged with doing? Because I don't see anything in the order about having meetings with the town. Obviously, I'm very supportive of that based on my last statement, but I just wanted to understand what we're really being held to here. So oh, yeah, I wrote the entire that entire piece of the order on my page here. So it is limited to our climate uh, mitigation goals, um, the 90-day order, as opposed to adaptation. Um, but where does it say that? It says climate action goals. What, I, what's your question? I'm not okay, just clarifying. I, I'm trying to under I, I'm trying to understand. Is there something that we are held to versus is there something that is? Are we held to both the charge and the order? Okay. So, yes. So. Uh, the 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 order is um, you know. Each committee has a charge, and it tells us what the committee is supposed to do. But this order uh, created the committee, and um, because it was a time-limited order that uh, what didn't make sense really to put in the charge because it would expire after 90 days, it was dealt with separately in an order uh, because it's temporary. It's I mean, it's going to not be relevant in a year as far as the charge is concerned. So it does pertain to the requirement in Article 16, which is simply to, to urge the town to be 100% renewable. Um, and it also can include other emissions reductions goals recommended by us. Um, so it is specifically limited to emissions reductions related goals. Um, so, uh, and it does not require us to uh, do outreach in that order, uh, but the charge does refer to goal setting. Um, so, uh, I, and I know that I would actually really recommend that everybody on the committee watch the um, town council meetings on video. The January, um, the January 7th meeting, the January 28th meeting, and I forget the date when we came back with the charge. February but those two 11th. meetings in particular, you can get a really good sense of where the council is and what they expect to get from us when we come back. So I just think it would be really helpful if everybody watched those. Um, I watched it this morning. <laughs> and, um, and it reminded me that we really need to watch it uh, so that we can get an idea uh, about this council. Could you Does that send the link? Question? Could you send the link to those? Yeah, I can try to do that for you. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. Can you give me the meeting dates again? January 7th was when we first discussed it, and January 28th is when we passed this order and we started a discussion of the charge and then um, appointed an ad hoc committee to you know, finish up with recommendations of the charge. Then we came back, and do you remember the date of the other meeting? February 11th. Um, so those three meetings, we spent a lot of time on this. Um, and, you know, there, there was disagreement. So it's, it would be good for people to hear what the members of the council said. Got it. 
Yeah, so first just to, I think, make clear the answer to your, to your question. So th the charge that we have, right, that defines the scope of this committee, right? And so everything we do in this committee, sh we should be able to justify in some aspect of this charge. And if we do something that's outside the scope of our charge, someone might challenge that. The order was literally that. The, t the council ordered us to do something. Um, technically, I guess it's a request. I don't think the council has the authority to order us to do anything, um, since we're not a committee of the council. Um, and the, so the charge in 6C is where um, we're required to engage the public. So it's engagement of the public and relevant stakeholders in education planning, goal setting, and development of climate actions with attention to inclusion of underrepresented groups and environmental justice communities, including but not limited to holding an annual public forum focused on climate action and the work of the ECAC. Um, so the order is what told us we have to come back with goals, but we have to do that within the context of the charge, which requires that any goal setting any goal setting engage public and stakeholders with special attention to underrepresented groups. Um, something that was helpful for me, which I'd be happy to share, was I took the charge and I put it into a matrix so that any idea I come up with or any idea that I hear, I can kind of put it in a box and it, it just, it's. I organized it slightly differently. I think there's a limit to the narrative form. Um, I, so I'd be happy to, this is to share um, this with everyone. It may be a helpful way to organize our thinking because uh, the reality is that this is an incredible amount of great work that goes into that charge. It's really impressive, but I get confused reading it, I think like the rest of us. So this may be a helpful thing which I'll send out to the group or to the whole world, I guess. And um, I, I want to just push back on that. Is that true that the order necessitates public engagement? Does, is it true that every action we take has to fulfill all six charges simultaneously? My, I would disagree. That's not my reading of it. And I think a, if we're going to set goals, I think one of our primary goals is, would reflect everything you just said at, before with regards to public engagement, I, I was terribly inspired by what you said. I deeply agree. I think that visioning process is so important, but I think we can also put that as one of our 90-day goals to really do it and to really do it well. So, I mean, the charge says the ECAC shall, right, and, and then promote a holistic and intersectional approach to climate action through engagement of public and relevant stakeholders in education planning goal setting. So my read of that would be that to set goals, you have to engage the public. Because that shall is, so if you look at say five, right, it says shall propose as necessary. And so there's sort of a, there's some wiggle room in five, but, but six does not seem to be as uh, flexible. But in your um, write-up, Evan, you pointed out that we did have an option to um, assume a minimal amount um, it, before having, you know, I do agree that we have to have some um, public um, outreach, and I love the idea of using the summer to reach um, a segment of the population that is here and not as busy as during the year. Um, and practice that, um, and also it's a key uh, stakeholder as well. So um, I, I would like to go ahead and assume that we're going to be recommending goals and that we think very carefully about how we communicate. And I think that we've all talked about that aspect, um, and no matter what, our communication is going to be key. Yeah, so I think where I'm still unclear is what we mean by recommending recommending goals. Um, and I guess I would say that I, I would prefer us to ask for 
a six month extension or some type of extension as opposed to trying to cram in a meeting in the first two weeks of September um, because I don't think we're gonna get student engagement in the first two weeks of September. I mean, they could technically come, but I don't think that they, I don't think it would be meaningful. And I, um, and so I would, I would say that doesn't mean we're going to slow down our work, but I would, I guess I would just um, not want us to take that direction. I think that, um, that it's, you know, there would be no problem with having, doing outreach within, before the end of September, having two or three types of outreach um, and that it is completely clear that there was the intent to come back within 90 days or within a very short period of time because of the urgency of this. That, you know, that there's no doubt that we are supposed to be coming back rapidly with these first set of goals and that it's that it's within you know that it's supposed to recommend target dates benchmarks and blah 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 targets to achieve the climate action goals adapted in article 16. so um i i regret really ever mentioning the word extension <laughs> I was the one who brought it up because I didn't think it made sense to bring it back in the middle of August. Um, and that I definitely wanted to get students involved. So I feel strongly that we need to get started by having a couple of forums and getting coming back to the council at the end of September or sometime around there. Um. Forums aren't the only way uh, that we can get input as well. Um, we can, um, you know, ask, ask for input by going places uh, to churches and uh, lunches in the senior center and, you know, really have um, person to person, you know, you know small groups. Um, and we all have our circles as well. Um, so, and, and I feel like we have resources in the community now for meaningful input, and it would still only be a beginning. Um, and we could come out with a you know, clear statement of, you know, here is what we want to know, how the community, um, it could envision us getting to what the Green New Deal calls for, which is carbon neutral by, um, you know, what, whatever it is, right? Um, and, and just put it out there that that's how we're going to proceed. We're proceeding with this as the goal, and our job now is to have as much input. I, I really think it's just a communication problem and we could set those goals. I would, I really like the questions that Laura suggested for a forum. And you know, we could also do something like send out a survey monkey form to different groups with those questions and gather the responses so that we don't necessarily have to organize multiple forums if we get, you know, responses from different people and organizations in the community. Um, and if we frame the questions in a way that, um, you know, expresses that we plan to take action on this and we would like people's input, what, how do they think that we can accomplish this? You know, how can we contribute to solving this problem? Yes, I think these are all uh, great ideas. I also do think that they take, everything we're talking about takes time, right? So, um, you know, if, if we're thinking about the 90-day deadline, so we have 
uh, four meetings between now and then. To me, it's unreasonable to think that we could accomplish this in four meetings. Um, beyond that, there's time that's taken in planning all of this. How, you know, what do we mean by engagement? Uh, how are we going to do it? Setting that up. Um, you know, if we, I, I liked Laura's idea of a forum with uh, sort of the local business community as a, as a test run. Um, at the same time, I know that the chamber just organized their economic development panel, um, and it, it took them uh, five months to get uh, their six business members together in a room to be able to talk. So you're not just talking about the, our time, but also other people's time. And so um, these t things take time. Uh, we also then need to be able to pro have time for us as a group to process all of that information, make sense of it, and come up with goals, and then we need to make sure that we feel like those goals uh, will pass. You know, one of the things I've been trying to think about is what the role of Darcy and me is on this committee. I mean, this is a strange committee in that it has counselors, and so why are we here? Um, and I think one of the purposes that we serve is uh, helping this committee be able to navigate things through the council, right? Because most of the things this committee will have to do will have to be passed by the council. And so I think that Darcy and I benefit already from having gotten this committee charged to the council, and that's going to inform a lot of the way we're going to look at the goals. And so when I'm thinking about even getting the committee charge, even getting this through the council, what was the obstacles we faced? And I think that, Dar I mean, as much as I don't want to subject you to watching the council meetings, um, some of that might be useful, because um, what we did here is, you know, are goals absolute or aspirational, right? Are we saying we're going to do this, or is it just sort of like a goal we know we'll never achieve? Um, there were a lot of questions about how this might affect the town economically, and we need to be able to be prepared for that, because the council, the order is for the council to adopt whatever we put forth with or without amendment. And what we don't want to happen is to put forth through something to the council um, and then have the council just dramatically amend it, right? I mean, that, they have the option to do that, and so we want to make sure um, that we can demonstrate feasibility and support and buy-in from multiple parts of the community so that the council doesn't, doesn't reject that. Um, in my mind, that takes time, and I, I honestly, I don't think it's feasible to do in the next four meetings, and I really don't think it's feasible to do with just a month extension. I think, it, I think we need, I think we would benefit from a longer extension and being able to come up with a really good process that involves a lot of people so that when we come forward with goals, we can say, look at everything we did. Because if we just come to the council and we say, well, you know, this was Somerville's goal, they're going to go, cool, we're not Somerville, right? Um, but if you can show them, look, here's the process, here's all of the people we engaged, here's who we talked to, here are the concerns we heard, and if we can show that to the council, then I think we're more likely of being successful of moving these ideas through the council and then having a really good start. Can I ask uh, what are other councillors as, you know, representing the council's perspective being likely? I was going to try to um, summarize what we were just saying, but if Darcy, do you have anything to add to what Evan just I already suggested that we all watch the the video. I think that that um, uh, it, it doesn't matter. I think the council is expecting us to come back. They have it on their their agenda that we're going to be coming back in 90 days. Um, they're expecting that they're going to be setting goals based on our coming back in 90 days. So that's the expectation, and I think that. It's, you know, we're probably going to end up just choosing um, Ithaca's goals or, you know, we're going to be making our decision based on uh, not a lot of data about Amherst itself. Um, and uh, I think that we can, we can just go ahead and do that. And that's what the council is expecting. So I think where I'm hearing some consensus is around an idea of trying to organize at least some type of forum this 
summer if we can. I completely hear Evan that I think it's going to be a challenge timing wise. But I think we could also potentially, to Andra's point, take it to a church, take it to an existing group. Potentially even we could get the high school students that are part of the environmental club together over the summer. Like I think there's some options, some low stakes options that we could do to test our, to, to, to test. Um, and I think I'm hearing somewhat of a consensus around the idea of doing a bit of visioning in this work. Um, you know, the questions I raised earlier was for the specific sector or for a specific group of people, what does carbon neutral mean in, in to them? What can we do versus what do we need help with doing? Um, what goals can we feel good about that are bold and achievable? And I think ideally these forums would end with us kind of having some ideas of these, of these goals where I think we don't have consensus yet, but where I also think we don't need to have consensus yet is whether or not we're gonna ask for an extension and for how long. So I guess my proposal would be that we maybe focus on trying to organize some of these meetings um, and see how it goes. And when we get a little bit closer to the September deadline, reevaluate whether we want to ask for an extension. I would push back Darcy. I think we would just do ourselves such a disservice to just pick a number based not on our community input or our data. I don't think, I think we, I feel strongly, I was at that meeting of the council. I feel strongly that if we, we can tell them, if we can show them the process we're gonna take and the goals that we hope to, hope to achieve, if they give us a few more months to, to really bring the whole community along, I, I would struggle to, to see that they would not accept that. Obviously, you guys are the experts, but. Um, so, <clears throat> I think we need to meet every week. And I think we need to have a work group to come up with uh, planning for outreach for the next, for this 90 day period. This is not what we're talking about right now, but we were, we were probably going to talk about it later. But um, uh, I'm available during this 4.30 to 6.30 time period every Wednesday, FYI. I could also do that. Okay, so I think we discussed this last time and that wasn't possible for everybody. It doesn't need to be possible for everybody though. Well, I think we need to, we need, if we're gonna get our community to come together, we have to get our committee to come together too, so. So, so there's a, uh, two things. One I was gonna say, and then another that I'll say based on what was just said. Um, so I'm always sort of thinking timelines and logistics. Um, if, I know this is still a question, if we want to ask the council for an extension, right? That would have to happen during a council meeting um, or it'd have to be voted on a council meeting. So again, 90, our 90 day timeline ends uh, August 20th. Um, so August 20th, uh, we as a committee meet again on August 3rd. The next town council meeting after August 3rd is, I mean, I'm sorry, July 3rd, July 3rd. The next council meeting is July 22nd and then the one after that, the next one after that is um, August 19th. So we obviously wouldn't want them, we probably don't want, it would look bad to vote for an extension the day before our goals were due, right? Um, and so I, I would say, you know, you said we don't have to decide right now, and you're right, we don't have to decide right now, but I would say if we, if we are going to ask for an extension, we would wanna do it by the July 22nd meeting. Um, as far as meeting every week, I, I, I said this last week, uh, I think that it is an unreasonable expectation for a committee of the town. Uh, there's only one committee of the council that meets one every week and that's going to be going down to every other week. Um, it is also an unreasonable burden on staff who has to post meetings and process minutes on top of uh, their normal job. Um, and so I like the idea of work groups down the road, I think we're a committee in its infancy and it's very important that we uh, coalesce as a committee and that we 
get to figure out how each other works and come together, and that takes a few months, and I think immediately trying to splinter off um, is a mistake. But I, I think that it is an unreasonable expectation of the members, and it is an unreasonable burden on staff to meet every week. No other. But they have work groups. Um, and so we could either have a work group that, that meets at that time, um, or we could have, we could have, do what we suggested the last time, which is, you know, post a meeting of the whole committee, and then as long as a quorum comes, um, we could meet. Even if a quorum didn't come, we could meet as a work group. Um, so we have all this work to do. How are we going to do it if we don't meet? I, that I don't understand. Uh, so. Let's, so we've merged into the next agenda <laughs> item, so let's finish up the conversation about the 90-day goals. Um, does anybody have else, anything else they want to add to that discussion before we close that? I, I think I just might ask the question again. I, 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 which I think I asked at the last meeting is, is there a version of that that gets us everyone what they want and outlines a long and robust community engagement process. I, I don't even think six months is long enough to do it from what you said. And so I think if, if, if to do this right, we're talking about years of work, I think we, we cannot not put the immediate goals on the table. I, I, and if so, if there's a way for us to try to articulate that which is time sensitive, that which we think the town council needs to hear in August. We figure out what that is and we make it as short and efficient as possible and we tell them that we're gonna do the rest of it right. I, I don't know if I'm imagining something that's impossible but I think it holds both ideas. Yeah, I mean, I think then we look back to what the science says. So the IPCC report laid out very clearly, and this is what's in the Green New Deal, 40 to 60 percent reduction by 2030, net zero by 2050. I mean, if that's where we want to go, I, I think it's difficult for anybody to argue that we could, should do less than that. I think what we could potentially do is say, we want to, we want to do see what we can do better than this, and that's why we're gonna set these initial targets and do a robust community engagement to figure out how we can even do, do better. Initial targets, it's the perfect phrase. They're initial targets. The whole world is gonna be refining and reviewing these targets over and over again as we try to hit them and revise and learn more. So um, so I think we need to digest this a little bit, um, but it sounds like there's, um, yeah, the idea of doing additional, uh, initial targets and working to make them stronger and more sector specific and more robust over time. Um, yeah. I just, I also want to, second what Evan said about doing the work as a group to understand each other, learn how we communicate, learn our styles. I am certainly figuring it out myself. I think I want to very formally address the importance of us understanding each other, our worldviews, and how we deeply feel about this, this issue and, and the way we want to get it done. I think that's, that's to be respected. So that makes me think about the need for a retreat, which we've um, considered and put off. Well, we didn't put it off. It's on this agenda. So are we ready to move on to the next agenda item? Well, okay. I had, I had a couple other um, thoughts. Oh, sure. Go ahead. So I just pulled out some, you know, based on what people wrote, um, our points of agreement, and I think that um, Laura has already summarized um, those. Um, and 
uh, I, I'm just not clear if we have come to some common understanding about um, how much of the community engagement would be needed before setting goals, you know, initial, let's, let's say we're talking about initial goals. Who's comfortable, you know, can, can we get kind of a straw poll of that? Who, who's comfortable with um, some initial outreach like we're talking about and, and bringing that to business community, small groups in the community that are already meeting where we go to them and such. I guess I would say I'm comfortable with, with visioning with them and working towards goals with them. I'm comfortable with the science-based targets as a backstop, but I'm not comfortable with throwing out sort of unresearched goals to seeing if they stick, because I think that could backfire. I'm not sure what your question is, Andrea. Uh, uh, it, we had a lot of disagreement about the amount of public input, kind of, of public input that's needed before setting the goals and making any recommendations. I'm wondering if after we've you know, discussed it, uh, if people have moved, and especially if we're talking about initial goals. And no extension, or a minimal extension. A minimal. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I feel like we could do some reasonable amount of outreach within that period of time to be able to, to show the tech council that we, had, um, we have done some and that we're, we have every plan to do much deeper outreach as we're developing a plan. Okay, I want to make sure we have time to talk about the retreat. Um, so I think I'm going to cut off this conversation and we can sort of bring it back when we talk about agenda items for next time. Is that okay? Um, okay. So, Andra, or I think Andra, you're officially the person on the agenda. Okay, I don't have that document. <clears throat> Um, so, but I think what's relevant is this idea of um, planning how we plan, and um, I think that we already are missing members, um, and that's one of the things that I'd like to know more about. It's like, you know, is there a way for people to be, you know, participating remotely, or are they like off the grid, um, and and perhaps set an expectation that as much as possible, you know, we're really going to make the effort to actually um, participate in some meetings, even when away. Um, I think, you know, Ashwin did do that and then he must be in the field or something you can't field. actually you know has no internet um, so so that's an example of the kind of structure communication timeline issues that I think we should be discussing or you know have some small group make some proposals for our rules of um, how we're, we want to conduct ourselves so that larger group can then discuss it. Um, and I, I, I don't, I, I'd have to dig around to get the actual document up. Does someone have that um, in front of them? 
Ja. So, um, you know, at, at some point, there's just decisions we need to make about how we want to progress. Uh, oh, okay, great. Um, uh, how, why, why wouldn't it work for people to bring a concrete proposal for everyone to discuss? Not everyone needs to develop that concrete proposal. Um, so that would be a way to have more work happening rather than us having to create everything in the um, regular meetings. We have something to bounce off of. You know, and, and I think having our, us each write our, our ideas, that was really great for our first conversation about this because we could really see where everybody's coming from. Um, and that concreteness really helps me. Um, so I like working from a springboard concrete document when making decisions. So I would like to have small groups figuring out, you know, the business outreach. Um, we don't need to all do that. That sounds like a work group to me. Um, and to kind of think about the different segments of the community that we might be able to reach. Um, when do they meet? And, you know, kind of pull that together. So those are some proposals uh, for discussion. Uh, no, could be right now. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we have uh, uh, time to get into all of those things uh, before 6:30, uh, and I think they're all really important, and that we should set aside time to um, talk about them more deeply. Unless there's, I mean, there are, we also need to talk today about whether we want to form a work group or have. Uh, you know, whether there are people available to meet weekly so that we can get going on maybe planning outreach and so on. So I would be supportive of us trying to schedule a retreat. I'm not, don't think that with, I think we've heard from members that we're not quite ready to form work groups and that we're not gonna, we're not ready to meet every week, and I think with three of our, four of our members missing, I don't think we can make that decision. But I would be open to scheduling a retreat. Um, what are others' thoughts? I think we'd benefit hugely from a retreat. I think it'd be great. I think it, in, it could feel like a setback. To this idea of planning about planning about planning, it, it feels like a setback. And, but the reality is to do important work, you have to, I, I think it's, I think it'd be a very meaningful and I think it would be a great investment in this group. So I would, I agree wholeheartedly. So just along the lines, Jesse, that you were saying that we might want to bring some very timely issues to the council um, and then other things we could put off, um, that might be, you know, that's how I feel right now, that we may not be able to schedule a retreat for a month. Um, <clears throat> but we could be making progress on certain things um, that we could decide right now. Like, um, I'd like to have um, a couple of us working with Stephanie on the um, MVP action plan so that we are, you know, formulating some ideas that are going to be very important to have the money for um, in 
that's due in a month, right? Uh, well, they haven't announced it yet. It's some, you expect it in July. Well, um, we're anticipating end of July, August, that the application is actually due. Yeah. So it's a it's a, a, a whole thought process that I think needs to start now, and then us be able to talk about in meetings um, before a pretty early deadline. Um, so I don't think there's any issue with us assigning individuals to come to the next meeting with materials. I mean, I think your point of learning when other groups we want to meet with meet is a great individual project that someone could bring to the next agenda. Um, and maybe there's others like that we that we could we could do for our next our next meeting. Yeah. So one thing I want to make sure we're always keeping in mind is that. Um, any work group, any time that we say, okay, you know, Jesse and Darcy, you're going to work with Stephanie on the MVP stuff, um, you are a subcommittee subject to open meeting law, right? And so that creates a lot of logistical, uh, that triggers a lot of logistical concerns, right? And this is where also my concern for our, our staff support comes in, because if we decide, all right, we're going to have our standing meetings that already have to be posted, agenda is prepped, minutes done, packets put together, but then also we're going to have a work group working on the MVP stuff, and we're also going to have another work group that's putting together a business form. Those two work groups are now subcommittees subject to open meeting law that have to post meetings in public places, have, have minutes, right? And our staff support is the one who's in charge of doing all that. And so every time you create another staff, uh, another subcommittee, you put more of a burden on staff. And that's where a lot of my concern with meeting weekly comes from as well, is, is meeting weekly while complying with open meeting law is challenging and puts a burden on whoever is charged with doing all of those things. And in this case, it's staff who has another job. And so that's why I think in the beginning, I, I'm really cautious about splintering off, in part because I think we need to coalesce as a group, uh, echoing what Jesse said, and in part because um, we have to make sure that we're always keeping in mind w what that actually means when we start saying, okay, you two work on the MVP stuff. Well, you can't just meet Stephanie in her office casually and ch chat about it right now. You have to be post a public meeting in a public place, public comment, all of that has to happen as well. And so it's, it's not as simple as just you two go off and work on this. I'd like to say that um, I've studied this now um, and that's absolutely not the actual law. I understand that it is the guidance that we were given by the town manager, but that guidance has not been given to the council. That guidance has not been given to any other committee, and I object to us being held to a standard that is perhaps considered best practices, but as the lawyer who gave the talk that we all um, looked at uh, on open meeting law said, of course, you know, that's best practices. We understand that's not what we're going to always do. And um, obviously there's conversations happening um, all the time um, with counselors uh, that aren't announced and we can do that. So if you and Laura decide on your own accord that you're going to independently get together and you're going to work on something, you are not subject to open meeting law. That's correct. If we as a committee say you and Laura are going to go do this, you are now a subcommittee and subject to open meeting law. And that's where the distinction comes in. But the other thing I, I would say is um, I, I am of the belief that we should be doing best practices, right? If we're going to do something, we should be doing it at the gold star standards so that if we get challenged down the line. Well, then that would go for all committees and, and the council as well. And I don't um, think that a brand new committee needs to be showing, modeling the best practices in open meeting law since um, we have a lot of work to do in a short time. So right. this would be a way to do it. Yes, we. I mean, that's the whole point of this committee is that we have to work with some urgency that's why we need to have some work groups or meet every week or whatever. Um, and you know, other committees like the Fort River Building Committee, they assigned work groups of three or four people who would go off and do an assignment and 
they were not posted meetings, but they, they came back with valuable information for the committee to use to make their, to actually have their deliberations and figure out what they were doing. So we can do that. And it seems like we need a work group for, to figure out our outreach and also to, to um, meet with Stephanie. So maybe it won't be official. So I think um, I think we need to, to prioritize setting a date for a retreat. Um, so I think that there, I do agree that it would be helpful to have a work group work with Stephanie on the MVP, um, but it's not announced yet. So I think that's something that's on hold until that's announced. I, work groups on outreach or, or goals, I just, we're just not ready for yet, I don't think. Um, we could vote on it if we wanted to, but I would almost say I don't even want to do that. I don't know what other folks think. I mean, if we voted on it now, it would be, th it would, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. I, I think that we should focus on a retreat um, first. I, I would like to volunteer my individual, singular, personal time to make a list of what potential near-term goals would be, immediate, sort of immediate needs, things that, that are moving fast that we need to be concentrating on um, in the event that this the 90 day gets postponed what have you we, we I would put forth to back to the group a, a sort of a working list of what has a sense of urgency is that would that be useful I'm not sure what you mean. What types of things are you talking about? I'm guessing it would be useful, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm curious if you're envisioning something that looks different from what Andra and Darcy brought today, because they brought a couple short term, right? I mean, you had goals that were 2020. Mine were just examples. Yeah. One of the things that I had suggested was that we come up with a suite of um, immediate projects that we need to do in town. Um, so were you thinking of that type of thing, like infrastructure? I mean, for example, j just understanding what's happening in the town. I, I think it, understanding the action that the town's going to be taking, that if, if we're out going to potentially outline a year-long process to figure out our recommendations, what are we going to be missing? What opportunities are we going to be missing? I, actu I actually think that years matter in, this, in the context of what we're talking about and the, the amount you know what's on what I believe is on the agenda for the town to be doing. I I think years matter. I think months matter. I think we've got to do it right. I really want to do it right, but it's worth the exploration. Okay, so if I think I understand it, it you correctly. Um, yeah, there's certainly th there's certainly things we should be doing now, some of which we may already be doing in other groups, some of which we, we may not be. So I think that would be a helpful framework. I don't think it means necessarily that we, um, I, I, would, I would probably argue that there's no like numeric goal that we need to meet in the next one year, but there's probably actions we should be taking now to meet a 40 to 60% reduction by 2030. Um, so, uh, if you want to propose what that agenda item would be, um, yeah. How about if we put on the agenda for our next meeting a 
discussion of a list that Jesse will make. Yes. I think I'm missing the next meeting. I thought, I think I also took, you were, you had brought up the retreat. So I will push it back to that and why don't I formulate a document I can send to you and Steph haven't given it further thought. Okay. So that's a future agenda item. Let me just look at the, the agenda again quickly here. Okay. Um, so we're on to the agenda setting um, for the next next meeting. So I, I guess I would suggest that I, I'll work with, with Stephanie to, to put out a doodle poll or something for, based on everyone's vacation schedules for a mm -hmm. retreat as soon as we potentially could do it. Um, and I think at the next meeting, our goal would be to, fi hopefully we would finalize that date over email prior, but we can officially finalize it at the next meeting. Um, the retreat could just be a four hour meeting too. It doesn't have to be something, you know, like, you know, you know, esoteric. Kind of <laughs> it's either six, it's six flags or I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I was envisioning a four hour meeting. I think that we would have to discuss whether it has to be a weekend because some of us may not be able to be out of work. Um, so that's something to consider. So uh, can I just jump in yeah. for a second looking at vacation schedules too? Um, so Ashwin is, is pretty much out of contact I think until the 28th. He's working in the field so he might not even have Wi-Fi access. My last request to him whether he could remotely participate in this meeting, he didn't even respond to at all. And a response to any email to him says he's in the field. Um, so it might be hard to reach him. I know that Steve, I think, said that he's going to sporadically not have any Wi-Fi access as well. So this is part of the problem that we're having with it's not just being away, it's really being able to have any access even to a doodle poll. So just, I just wanna put that out there. Okay. Thanks. So let's see what we can do with what we've what we've been given. Um, and I think we have the vacation schedules at least for Steve, right? So we can at least use that as a yes as a basis. Okay, great. Um, I guess I. What else do we want to do for our next meeting? Um, can I request that? Um, an ongoing agenda item be um, a five minute update from staff, specifically yeah. me, so that I can keep you all informed of opportunities that come up. Because I will be, I'm, I do ongoing work and it's gonna keep happening. And I, uh, one thing I would like to add to some of your conversations is that there are going to be opportunities and grants and funding opportunities that come up that we can't just always sit and wait on, that, there's gonna be action that's gonna be happening even while there are discussions going on about planning. There are gonna be opportunities, some of which I would say something like a, a heat smart program that the state currently has where people can um, install heat pumps in their homes at a discounted rate and a bulk rate, it's similar to the Solarize program. That's something we're probably gonna to wanna to do and we can't just sort of sit around and wait till you know it's like the ideal time. There are things we're gonna to wanna to just do. So I would be coming to you with those um, efforts and those opportunities that are available when they come up. Okay, great. Um, yeah, Darcy. And Stephanie, the, it seems like it doesn't make sense for us to hold off discussing the MVZ. VP plan until after it's announced, right? Aren't we having input into the actual application? All it is is a next step, and it's just, it doesn't hold us to anything. We can say whatever we want in the next steps, um, but it doesn't mean we actually absolutely have to do them. We just have to make sure that, um, that the action item is sort of um, referenced in the summary of findings. I'll, I'll be sending you the most updated version of the summary of findings, and if you read it, uh, there's a lot that's listed. There's a lot of information in there, and that's all based on community input. Um, I found that, an probably for me personally, 
one of the most um, valuable exercises in gathering people together to really talk about some of the things that you all are going to be working on. And I think this report can be helpful in identifying where we have some needs. Um, mitigation, the mitigation to reduce CO2 is a given. Like, we know that that has to happen. Mm -hmm. And we sort of know some of the ways in which we need to sort of go about that happening. I think the things that we're looking at in terms of the vulnerabilities is where our um, community is needing support in terms of climate change and how it's impacting them. So for instance, you know, things like communications and that kind of thing, we need to make sure that those, uh, we can put all of the energy um, and CO2 reducing efforts that we want out there, but we really also need to think about the community members and how they are directly being impacted by climate change. So I think there's a lot of valuable information in that report. Um, it was pretty, I felt pretty thorough and pretty, it felt like it had a lot of community input. So I would just say, don't worry too much about what's in the, in the next steps. It's, it's what we really apply for for the action grant that matters. And there's so much in the summary of findings that I think we could make reference to just about anything. I mean, energy, energy CCA effort is referenced. Um, as well as heating and cooling centers, as well as communication systems, as well as infrastructure. I mean, everything's in there. So I think you've got a really nice framework. I think the MVP report will be really helpful. So I think we've got the finalized retreat date, hopefully five minute update from staff two other items that were discussed um, under learning when other groups meet, what other groups we will want to meet with. I think um, that could be helpful. Do, do you want to do the first step of making that list? Um, I, I think that's something it would be good to kind of collect. Maybe we could send to Stephanie groups that we know of and, and I ideas for that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So each of us could send, similar to what we did this week, um, I think that should include committees that I think we anticipate will have interest or maybe concerns with some of the work we're doing. Um, so we can try to anticipate that. Um, is there anything from the stuck structural, I'm looking at our running list of items and recognizing we have two minutes left, but um, is there anything specific from the structural discussions about the committee um, that we wanna add to the agenda for next time? The other things on this list are joining NIMS officially and what the process um, is to do can that. I, can I clarify that? We're already We're, part of NEMS yeah. through Stephanie's it's, participation. It's the okay. Global Covenant of Mayors that we'd be. Oh, Global Covenant of Mayors, okay. Right. That would be a good thing to discuss as a framework. Okay. I also think we need a continuation of this conversation of our 90 day goals. Okay, um, how do we propose doing that? So one thing that's tough for me is we're a nine person committee and five people submitted their ideas and they're the same five people who are here talking about those ideas. Um, Steve and Ashwin, uh, perhaps are both not going to be at the next meeting and we are not sure whether or not we will be able to have contact with them between now and then. Um, so there's two of the four absent who we might not be able to engage in this at all <laughs> before the next meeting or at the next meeting. Um, Nikki and Dwayne, I assume, will be at the next meeting because they're not on vacation. Um, my hope would be uh, we have spent a lot of time among the five of us talking about this. I've watched Andre take 
incredibly good notes. Uh, not that I'm looking at your computer, but I've been seeing you type this entire time, so I assume there's very thorough minutes. So my hope is that they will feel, um, and I guess there's also a video recording, um, assuming they have access to that. Um, but it would be great if, if the next conversation we have about the 90 day can start with Nikki and Dwayne, since they have not been able to have a voice in this conversation yet. Maybe we could make an invitation to them to submit something in writing for. Did we yeah. hear anything from them, Stephanie? No. Nikki is away um, until the 25th or something, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we think that's a great idea. Um, we can, I can ping them, Stephanie and I can ping them directly and ask them to do that. I think, as Darcy did, if any of us want to reframe our language to, to be a little bit more concise and clear, both whether what we what we want in terms of an extension or no extension, and then what we would present to the the committee at that time, um, either what we would present to the committee asking for an extension or just in general, um, we can sort of refine that on paper and then add that to that discussion. Does that sound like a good plan? I'm seeing some nods. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, Okay, so I think we have a good start to the ad ad agenda. Um, so I'll send that around as a as a as a start. Um, and anything else urgent? It it just seems like we need to be not only sending uh, ideas to Stephanie about outreach. We we need to be specifically you know, setting up outreach dates with different, you know, if we're going to have a forum or if we're going to meet with bid or whatever we're doing, it seems like we need to start setting that up if we're doing it during July, August, September. Um, and I don't know how many of those engagements there would be, but it seems like it requires someone working on it. I'd, I'd actually be glad to work on that with Andra if Andra wants to be doing that. Um, although she may not want to be doing that. Um, I think that I would not be comfortable with us reaching out to them with any specific agenda because I don't think we've agreed to what that would, would be. Um, no, I'm just talking about just needing to bring something back to this group at the next meeting of possibilities of what we could do, what the dates might be, or groups that we could meet with. Nothing direct. Right, we're uh, not contacting them. No, no. Well, that's what we're all doing. So we're all going to send that to Stephanie. And I'm going to compile a list of all of it. Yeah, she's just yeah. compiling a list. I'm saying that we could we could try to target figure out what are the groups that would be the you know groups that are the most valuable to meet with within this 90 day period and you know what are the if we were going to have a forum where might it be when et cetera, that kind of so thing. i would say that we should each include that in our comments and then we can compile them and hopefully there's consensus, some consensus to, to build there. So you get to do all of that, Stephanie. <laughs> That's fine. Great. Um, okay. Any public comments? No. no? Okay. Um, well, then I think we can close the meeting. One more staff comment. Sorry. Oh, and sorry. It's yeah. really kind of a request. Um, my concern as we move forward is that um, you all are going to have more documents and things that you want to share. I would request that you all funnel them to me so that I can also keep track of them and keep them organized for you. Um, but I think if they start flying around, it's going to be hard for me to keep track. So if you send them to me, I can sort of organize them in a way that I can include them in a packet and things also are more um, together. And again, these items will be listed on your ECAC website page. There's going to be, um, it's not put together yet, but I've already talked to IT today, and we're going to have um, 
a place for packets. So right now it lists agendas and minutes. It will also list packet information. So your packet materials will be there. So if you send me something, I'm gonna just assume that it's gonna be a public document and it will be listed in there as well. Great, okay. Everybody good? All right, thank you.